like to look at another category of polar graphs called limassons. A limasson is a graph that comes from an equation that looks like this. R equals A plus B sine theta or R equals A plus B cosine theta. So I have one graph right here. This happens to be R equals two plus four sine theta. Now I, I'm on Desmos and I put in B right here so that it can vary. Now I'm going to change the v, B value and I'd like you to watch what happens to the limasson. Here it's B equals four. Now I'm going to change it so that B is something smaller than four and look at what's happening. We have this inner loop that's getting a little bit smaller. And when I get down to two, right at two, the inner loop is gone completely. And we actually right here have a special limason called the cardioid. If you look at that, it looks like a heart and a heart, we have that word cardio for heart. So um, we call that a cardioid. But let's keep going. Let's change the B values more. Now it will no longer be a cardioid, but it's still a limason. All of these are limasons. So here we go. Notice there is no inner loop anymore. But there is this little dimple in there in this particular one. But you'll see pretty soon that dimple will go away. And let's continue. Now B will be a negative value. We'll keep sliding. Oh, here comes an inner loop again. Right? Here's our limason right here when I make the B value negative 2, if I can do it. Right here, when B equals negative two, I have a cardioid again. Can't seem to get it right at negative two, but right there, we have that cardioid. So here's what our limassons look like. We're gonna graph these by hand in just a moment, but let me change this graph so that you see it with, instead of the sine, let's see it with the cosine. And notice it just changes the orientation of the graph, but the shapes, look very much the same. All right, so here are our limassons. And notice when they have this inner loop, the place where that loop crosses is right there at the pole. Okay, so now we know what we're looking for. We're looking for that type of graph. Let's graph a few by hand. So I'm gonna move my computer away. Here, we'll, we'll go down here and work on paper, I'll move, move that, and let's graph. Here, we'll get our polar grid ready. And let's start with this particular equation. R equals, I grabbed the wrong pen. R equals, let's see, can you see it here? R equals, four minus four sine theta. That's the equation that we like to graph. Now, as I've mentioned before, I look at the rectangular graph to help me get a picture of what's happening. So let's graph y equals four minus four sine x first. Notice that the period has not been changed. We will have a period of two pi. The amplitude will be four. It's gonna go up four and down four, but there is a reflection, right? If we just had that, it would be a reflection across the x-axis. But we do have a vertical shift up four units. So let's sketch that curve. So instead of having a point here at zero, I'm gonna have a point here at four. And I'm gonna go out one complete cycle, we'll get out to two pi. Let's see, oh, here's my midline right here. I'm sort of graphing with respect to that line. And I know I'm going down instead of up for my sign starting here. Let's see, this, here's pi, here's pi over two, here's three pi over two. So I'm here, and then I'm gonna come down to pi over, come down to zero at pi over two, and then we're back up at four. Then go up 
and back down. So notice it's gonna get up to eight. And so we have this curve. So let's see how that translates to polar. Remember this is our X and Y in our rectangular coordinate system, but we're using it for reference now. And this will be our theta. These are our theta values and these are our R values. And we can pick our some key points right here. Notice when the angle is zero, we will be four units away. So let's start here, zero, we're four units away. One, two, three, four, right here. And at pi over two, we're at the pole right here at zero. Notice it does not cross through the pole because it doesn't go negative. It's not gonna cross through it and continue. It will just touch the pole and then move away. Let's see, at pi, we're at positive four. So when I'm turning here, looking at pi, I'm at positive four right here. At three pi over two, I'm at eight. So three pi over two, I'm here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm right here. So these are the points that I have to come up, to use to help us come up with the graph. Now let's come back to our picture and figure what, out what's happening. Between zero and pi over two, the R values are positive. So between zero and pi over two, the values will get exist in here and they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller until it gets to zero. So I know I'm out here, but it's gonna come around and get closer and closer and closer to zero. Now, if you feel like plotting a point so your graph will be a little bit more precise, find a value that seems nice to substitute into this, something we're familiar with, like how about a, a pi over six. Pi over six would give us a nice value. If we put pi over six in here, we have sine of pi over six, that's a half. A half times four is two. Four minus two is two. So at pi over six, I would be two units out. So I have another point here that helps me get a more accurate picture. So I'm gonna curve around this direction and then I get to zero. Now from pi over two to pi, my R value is positive still. So from pi over two to pi, I still have a positive value. And we know we have some symmetry here at pi over six, it was a, the R value was a half. At five pi over six, we know the sine of five pi over six is the same as the sine of pi over six, we would have the exact same value. So here I would also have a value of two. And I can draw that same type of picture coming this direction. Let's see what happens from pi to three pi over two. Notice our R values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Our R values are always positive for this picture. There aren't any values down here. So between pi and three pi over two, from here to here, R is getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it hits eight. Did I get to eight there? Two, four, six, eight, okay. So if you feel more comfortable plotting a point so you can see really where it goes, let's, let's put in seven pi over six. That's another one we should be pretty familiar with. The sine of seven pi over six is negative one half times negative four is two, two plus four is six. So right here at two, four, six, it's gonna be way out here. So it gives me a little bit of a, an idea of how wide I should make this. Remember our R values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger until they get to eight. So I have it, Ooh, I, I missed it a little bit right there. Let me see if I can do a little, do a little better right here until it gets up to eight. Would want to erase that. If I would, weren't using a marker, I'd erase that right there. But then notice from three pi over two to two pi, 
the R values are getting smaller again. I know that at 11 pi over 6, I'm going to have that same 6 value that I had. So that's 2, 4, 6. Let's put that point in. And we'll draw this curve, getting rid of this. So here's our limason. This happens to be the special limason called the cardioid. And we, we have a cardioid, it turns out, when these two numbers are the same. Doesn't matter if they're opposites in sign. If four and if we have a four here and a four here, we end up with a cardioid. But come up with the rectangular graph first. Use it as a reference so you can come up with your polar graph. Let's do another one. Let's let the next one be this. It will be R equals 2 plus 4 sine theta. So again, we're going to graph Y equals 2 plus 4 sine X first. Notice we have our sine curve, amplitude is four, but now it has only shifted up two units. So let's see what our sketch gives us. Here's zero, notice there is no period change, so the period will be two pi. Let's cut that into nice four equal intervals. So let's see, we've shifted up two units. But the amplitude is four, so here's our little midline right here, but it's gonna go up four units from there. So I'm gonna start here and go up four units, that's four, there's six. It's gonna go up to six and come back down. And then it will go down four units from here, that'll put it at negative two, and back up. So here's our graph of our sine curve that is y equals 2 plus 4 sine x. So again, we know this is x and this is y, but for purposes of converting to a, pol a polar graph, we're going to think about these being our theta values and these are our values. Now, anytime the graph crosses the x-axis, we will have a place where the graph will cross the pole in polar coordinates and we'll be able to draw a tangent line if we find out what those values are. So the x-intercepts are pretty important. So let's find them for this particular equation. We can set r equal to zero and solve this equation. 2 plus 4 sine theta. Subtract 2 and divide by 4. So you'll get negative 1 half equals sine of theta. You know the reference angle for this is pi over 6. But we know those are second and, or excuse me, third and fourth quadrant angles where the sine is negative. So you know theta is going to be 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So those are key points for this graph. 11 pi over, oh sorry, that's our 7. 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So let's bring our polar grid in to the picture and see what we can figure out. Let's put in the places where the graph will cross the pole in first at seven pi over six. So here's seven pi over six. Let me put it in with a dashed line and I just continue the line on. And at 11 pi over six, so here's 11 pi over six. So those will be relevant at some point in this graph. So now let's put in some other important points. When the theta is zero, r is two. Let's put that in. Zero, two. Let's see, how big will this go? We're gonna get out to six. How about if we make the increments by 
um, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, let's do that so that we will um, have our graph be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna make this be one, this two, this three, so those little darker lines will be one increment. So all of the smaller lines will be a half. That's a half, one, one and a half, two, and so on for this particular graph. So at zero radians, we're two units out, one, two. At pi, now let's move on here to this point. At pi over two, our R value is six. So pi over two, we're at six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, we're here. And at pi, this is pi, this is zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. So we're at pi here, and at pi, our R value is two. So one, two. So we can see our graph between zero and pi over two. The R value is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. We can pick a value in between zero and pi over two to help us get a little more accurate graph. You can pick any value you want between zero and pi over two. I just like pi over six because pi over six is so friendly when we put pi over six into our uh, sine function because we know sine of pi over six is a half. A half times four is two, two plus two is four. So at pi over six, I'm at four. One, two, three, four. Similarly, if you pop in five pi over six, you'll be at four. One, two, three, four. So let's draw what we have so far. Between zero and pi over two, the R value is getting bigger and bigger. So it is getting, starts here at two, it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger until it hits six right at pi over two. From pi over two to pi, the R values are getting smaller. So they're getting smaller. It still goes through this point right here. Ooh, that could have looked a little better. Let me make it a little bit better right here. And we know that the, this will be symmetric. Now let's see what happens. Between pi and seven pi over six, the R value goes to zero. So here we go. Between zero, between pi and pi over six, this is gonna curl in toward the pole. So let's have it curl in toward the pole. And here's where the tangent line's gonna come into play. The Tangent line is right at seven pi over six. So as we come in, we'll come in at this angle and we'll cross through. We'll come in at this angle. That's why we have it there and cross through. Now, where is it headed? At three pi over two, our R value is negative two. Three pi over two is here. Negative two puts us in this direction. So negative two is right here. So our graph is gonna curl around up to this point. Notice from three pi over two to 11 pi over six, the R value gets smaller. So we come back down toward the pole. Again, we're using this line as our tangent line. That means our graph is gonna hug that line and be linear at this angle when we get back toward the pole. So let me come down and it's at that angle, and it crosses through the pole almost along this line, but then it's gotta continue on and head toward this point. And we have our limason done. This is a limason with an inner loop this time. So our key, some of our key points were these right here at 2 
zero, six pi over two, two pi, right here. Negative two, three pi over two, which was here, and two, two pi. And finding these two values, which gave us a sense of how steep or shallow the graph is when it was coming in toward the pole. Let's do one more. And we'll let this one be r equals 3 plus 2 cosine theta. Again, it still fits that same format, so we know it's a limaçon. We have a sense of what it looks like, sort of, but we're going to graph y equals 3 plus 2 cosine x to give us a reference. So I'm gonna start at zero and finish at two pi. Notice the period has not changed, so we have a period of two pi. I'm gonna cut that into quarters. We know the amplitude is two, but it's been shifted up three units, so I'm gonna come up here to three. And Here's our midline right here for the graph because it's been shifted up three. But we know the cosine graph will start up here. And then it will come down and come down here to one. And it will come back up and finish one cycle back at five. This graph exists between one and five. Notice again, amplitude is two, so the graph is going up and down with an amplitude of two, but it's been shifted up three units. So our one cycle of this particular graph looks like this. And here's pi, here's pi over two, here's three pi over two. Notice now there are no points where the graph crosses or touches the x-axis. That means when we go to our polar graph, there will be no place where the graph touches the pole. The graph won't, get, won't ever hit this point right here. So again, we're thinking, here's our theta, and here's our r. Were, were, they were the X and Y in this rectangular graph. So let's start and graph some of these key points. R theta, five, zero. So at zero radians, we're at five units. This time, I guess I will make the increments by one. One, two, three, four, five. So here's my first point. Let's move on to pi over two. At pi over two, my R value is three. One, two, three. Let's move on to pi. At pi, so now I'm looking in this direction, my R value is just one. At three pi over two, my R value is three. One, two, three. And at two pi, I'm back to five. So our graph is going to come around this way, but it will never touch the pole. So let's see what it looks like between zero and pi over two. Notice the R value is getting smaller and smaller and smaller as we go from zero to pi over two. Well, to get here, I again can plot a point as I did with the previous graph so that my values are nice or my points are a little nicer. I don't know how extreme or how round it should be. Let's see, let's pick a point between or an angle between zero and pi over two that would be nice. 
How about pi over three this time because we're talking about a cosine. The cosine of pi over three we know is one half. One half times two is, is one and one plus three is four. So if we just were plotting a point and we put in pi over three, we would have four. That's what the calculation that I was doing just to make my graph look a little bit better. So at pi over three, I'm out at four. One, two, three, four. So our, our values are getting smaller and are getting until we get to here at three. So let's have it come around this way. And because we know that the value at pi over three for the cosine is the same as the value at uh, five pi over three, we could put in five pi over three right now as well. And we know that's gonna be four. And we could draw this piece of our graph if we wanted to as well. Now let's look what's happening between pi over two and pi. So from pi over two to pi. So we're talking about the rotation in here. The R value is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Now, some of the cardi some of the limasons have a little dimple there. Some of them don't. We'd say it's concave or not convex. Concave or convex. Um, I don't really want you to worry about that too much. Um, you could plot another point if you wanted so that your graph is a little more accurate. Like I could put in 2 pi over 3. We know the cosine of 2 pi over 3 is negative 1 half. Negative one half times two is negative one, and negative one plus three is two. Again, just to make my graph be a little bit nicer. So at two pi over three, I'm out here at two. And similarly at four pi over three, I would be at two. And then you can draw in the rest of the graph. Turns out this one will have a little bit of a dimple, but there's no way without us um, talking a little more detail that we would figure that out. Um, and for now, I would accept this. Mine doesn't look particularly symmetric, but there, there should be a line of symmetry right here. This half should look the same as this half. But here's our cardioid. That is 3 plus 2 cosine theta. Our key that that points are correct right here and here, here and here. We did not have the graph crossing or touching the pole because our graph never crossed or touched the x-axis. So our r value never got to zero. So we stayed away from the pole. I hope this is enough for you to start practicing graphing some lemasons.